So I've got the ribs in. I have four that I've installed on the walls. Good morning. I'm in Lakewood, Colorado, and I'm near the Belmar Park once again. Going to go for a walk. On the south side of the Belmar Park is the Lakewood Heritage Center, which is this building back here. I don't know too much about it. It's not open right now. Um, I met a lady several years ago who was a manager and director here. Uh, i got to do my stretches. And she said that it's like a, a combination of several things. It's a amphitheater for outdoor performances for the arts, which I think is where they get a lot of their funding. And then there's like uh, garden plots, community garden plots, mixed in with like historic buildings that are supposed to be recreations of places in Lakewood, Colorado. So I don't know too much about it, but I'm going to wander around here as part of my walk. I've been doing my stretches before walking, but honestly, I can't really tell any difference. My hip is still hurting me when I get a couple hours out. There's a garden plot back here. Well, I read one of these little plaques. It's amazing how informative they can be. And basically, this is the Estes Motel. It was originally located over on Colfax. Colfax used to be the main street for accessing downtown Denver, going all the way out into Golden and then leading into the highway that originally went up through the mountains. Anyway, this uh, building, and I guess most of these buildings, were donated to the city of Lakewood by businesses that basically went out of business, and then they just donated their property, and they relocated and moved the property uh, all the way over to here. So originally this was probably about 10 or 12 blocks away. It's a cute little building, <laughs> sort of interesting here's the original sign up here it, it feels like you're going back in time to a movie set or something and bill and ethel's beauty salon here i'm seeing a giant red flashing light now on the top of my screen uh, i've not charged my batteries in a couple of days so my spare battery's back in the step fan i'm just gonna go walk and enjoy this, this steak uh, and chili house <laughs> over here it's quite the interesting place ahead of me is the amphitheater. Pretty fun. If you're here in the Lakewood area, I recommend checking it out. It's an interesting place. And I'm back at the step van. That was a nice 45 minute walk. Need to change the battery on my camera. And we're back. I'm gonna go get some breakfast. I'm at my friend Becky's house and she's letting me use her garage, her power source, be able to run into air conditioning, water, everything, so that I can do a little bit of the work on the step van today. Very grateful to her. Thank you, Becky. I think I've come up with a solution for the support system for the structure for the insulation and the walls. So basically the step van has these extruded aluminum, I guess these are called hat shape ribs here. So these come with the Grumman Olsen uh, step van and it basically is about three quarters of an inch between the wall and this uh, surface here where you normally do your attachment of shelves and things like that. As I've mentioned in past episodes, the problem is there's no support near the pocket door and nothing in the rear corner of the step van. So I needed to add something as a standoff here. I found this hat shaped metal piece in Home Depot and it is similar in shape and almost the same dimensions as far as the standoff here. I think this is uh, 7 eighths of an inch instead of 3 quarters, but it's so close I think it will work. But it is made out of steel and so I wanted to put something to isolate it from the uh, aluminum. And so I have this uh, tape that I put underneath. Now I should mention that all of the connection points for uh, the step van where you have aluminum on aluminum They have some thin tape here behind and I was able to get a little piece of that out from under it And it looks very very similar to this tape that I bought so I bought some of this flashing tape It's adhesive on one side and Thin and looks very similar to what they were using in the aluminum on aluminum 
So I've laid that down and I put the steel rib on top of that and then I'm using rivets to go through the wall and I really like this solution. I think it's better than what I was doing before where I was just putting up one by twos of wood and using a screw from the outside going through. So that's what I'm working on today is running rivets into these metal ribs. You all mentioned and recommended to me to buy a loading bar for some of my uh, issues I had with storing the lumber over here as well as a, a way to hold the pieces of wood, the furring strips against the wall when I was doing this solo. So I've been looking online for the past, oh, probably week, several days for loading bars and also uh, truck stops, but all the loading bars were $30 to $50. And, it just seemed like for the amount of use that I would get out of it, it didn't feel justified. Today I went to Harbor Freight and I was getting some more rivets to complete the job here. And I asked if they had loading bars. I found a loading bar at Harbor Freight for $15. And the box was damaged and open. And I talked to the manager and they gave me an open box discount. So I even got it for cheaper. So I used this loading bar to hold the plywood against the wall while I was working and installing this last steel um, rib here. So I've got the ribs in. I have four that I've installed on the walls. So that gives me enough on the side walls. Now I just have to figure out how to deal with the back doors, which is gonna be another issue. Um, it's getting pretty hot here in Denver. I think I've had about all I can handle of the heat for today. I've got the max fan up here running full speed and all of the doors and windows open um, but it's just brutal hot so i'm going to take a shower uh, clean up get packed i'm going to get myself a lunch i need to do some shopping today and today i'm going up into the mountains southwest of denver to a cheap rv living gathering so they're having a get together out there in the middle of the forest somewhere i've never been up in that area i just have some gps coordinates and i'm going to go up there and meet uh, some subscribers some other van dwellers and then there's one gentleman there that's offered to help give me some advice and some mentoring I've arrived at the camp out. Uh, it's way up in the mountains, about an hour and a half um, south and west from Denver. And uh, we're up in the wilderness. It's absolutely gorgeous up here. I've met uh, four other people from the Cheap RV Living. So this is sort of a Colorado gathering from the discussion forums on that website. And it appears like there's probably, oh, maybe a dozen people up here right now. You can see over here a uh, van out there and over here is Doug's rig. He's got a, a cargo trailer with um, with a dually pickup truck. And then I see some other vehicles off in the distance um, this way. Um, I'm going to get some dinner and I think that's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.